there's an interesting pop culture topic that's trending right now. Coach Prime, who coaches at Jackson State, which is an HBCU, historically black university college, um, who took a position at Colorado, which is a uh, mostly white inst inst institution and a bigger league, a bigger um, opportunity, opportunity. His pay will be more, of course. So there's a lot of con conversation about how did he sell, sell, sell out? Did he use Jackson State as a stepping stone? Did he, did he deal um, unjustly or without character? in his operations at Jackson State. Most of the people that I have seen talk about it are talking about it on a very basic level in that we're gonna use race, resources, and the old story of black people when they do well, they, you know, you leave your community, you move up, you move to the sub 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 suburbs, whatever, like that whole um, idea, which is a real thing. However, in this instance, it may be the case. There are details, though, that people need to fact factor in, and this thing has has like four layers, as I see it. You have the football on on field layer. You have the facilities layer. You have the HBCU culture com community layer, then you have the, biz bu the um, business of the game. So we start with the on field. Prime has been there two and a half years. He had a half year COVID year that they played in the spring and he cleaned house, he got his team together. The next year they played, they, they ended up, I think 11 and two or 10 and, 10 and two, they won the SWAC. Um, did well, obviously. Um, then this year, they his recruiting stepped up, and the team that he put out on the field was dominant in the swag. And people who know the sport, my son, he brought up brought up some points about Dion staying staying in the swag. You can't get any of the bigger schools to play him because his team is too good and they're a lower le level team. So he would be stuck playing at that le 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 level. They dominated this year too. It wasn't like most of the games weren't close. And the games that were close, like they were just sleepwalking. So you have a team that has in two, two years man managed to he put new locker rooms in, new practice field, new facilities. Like he's upgraded everything. The cheerleaders, the basketball team, like other, every, the university as a whole got bigger. But let's stay on the f football part. They're going to end up 12-0. They have a, a chance this week to go 13-0. So next year, he has, he has some more studs come, coming in. Now the SWAC as a conference hasn't adjusted. They haven't done anything to increase the talent level on the other side. So now you got a team who is growing and was dominant this year, was very good last year. They, they went undefeated in, in um, the conference last year, undefeated, defeated again, but worse this year. And now they're coming in with a new class. <laughs> what is he gonna do? Like at what point does it become not beneficial to be playing in the swag as as that team so then what would there be what what would his options be then to take jackson state out of the swag and go up to another league whatever other league is under the the, the uh the power five schools or maybe a power five if he if he was able to work that now he did say in two years he said give me two two years and i'll be and i'll be able to be competitive with bama now imagine that. If they're competitive with Bama in two two years, what does that mean for them in the sweat? It means you're gonna have a lot of 62-0, 72-0, 77-0 <sighs> games. 
the SWAC and a lot of HBCUs don't understand the commitment it takes to be good in sports. And they hate to, like, there's a thing where we don't want to be just sports or whatever, but sports often drive a lot of donations into schools. HBCUs on a whole are terrible at fundraising. No one gives enough money that they can have facilities. Like Howard, I think this a year ago or so, the dorms didn't have heat in it or whatever, like that. It's an issue going on. If you have a guy like Prime there, he raises the bar. You're talking when he was when he was there, it's gonna be long, I'm sorry. Um, his value to the city and the school was thirty mil, mil, million million dollars in year one. I don't know what what it, what it was this year and half of last year. But one man, his energy garnered thirty million dollars for that town and the u- 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 university. He leaves the school, the program, in better condition than he got it. So football-wise, you have a dominant team that would be a problem for the other teams. Like, what do they do? How do they progress? They, they haven't adjusted to his, his tempo of ra- raising the bar. So that may have been a piece of him looking at it and saying, okay, I'm dominant th- this year. What's next? Like, how is anyone going to match me? All right. So facilities wise, one of the things that he when he got there, he got them a new crack, 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 practice field. They they were playing on this cow field that had mud. They could only practice practice days that it wasn't raining. So he he raised money to get a new field. in. he raised money, money to get a locker room. in. But there's still more to do. If you know athletics, when you're building a top flight program, there's a lot more involved than just those then there's a practice field and you know they're gonna need a bubble soon oh like there's a bunch of stuff weight rooms training rooms new trainers hydro everything whatever then the the, um, the latest things are for recovery and training that's gonna have to be in place if you're gonna have a top-notch program so the facilities it's hard to raise money specifically for just that because the school's going to want to cut which is whatever so you got football facilities so he's looking at football it's like we're dominant what's next for facilities he lo- lo- looks at i got this stuff off off of my bare effort right and actually he actually gave like a million dollars i think to fin- fin- finish the locker room now remember that million dollars that he gave right so he gave that to get the locker room fin- 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 finished. I'm sure sure they paid, paid, paid him back, but he wasn't waiting around for them to get it done. He just was like, yo, let's get this done. Boom, right? So now let's go to the HBCU co- community and culture. His introduction to the SWAC, which is this HBCU league in the South, um, it wasn't a warm welcome. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of talk about, you know, he thinks he's just going to walk in here. And he thinks this is easy or whatever. There's a lot of talk in the beginning. And there's been a lot of talk this year about is he actually good for HBCUs because of the, um, the light that's being sh- sh- shine, shown, whatever, on HBCUs. And they're like, is, is that good? Because then are we going to sell sell out? Is it going to change the culture of HBCUs? Are we going to lose, like, you know, the black culture? Now, HBCUs, tell me when we actually own those universities. Yes, we go to them and it's predominantly us. But there's a lot more non-blacks there. There's a lot more non-black fa- 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 faculty. There, there, there's a lot more accepting of non-black culture, culture, culture there. So, so don't give me the whole prime is coming. There's a light sh- shine shown on 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 the HBC C C C C C U S, and it might change culture. There. Culture been changed. Like HBC C U S aren't what they once were, and you don't see. They aren't capable of creating 
huge impact on black culture because they don't have enough money. And they have to have these soft skill electives, majors or whatever, that don't make no money. <laughs> like, what's the best business school in HBCUs? There is one, How 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 Howard's Good in some other schools. But you're talking one. Most of them originally were agricultural schools. So it's hard for it's been hard for them to escape that his his history because that's what they are built on. And so there's there's always gonna be a piece in there. Sometimes black people fight change because change has never been good to us. But when there's a change that is happening that we can actually craft in a person there who would possibly be good to kind of lead the way, we have to adjust to, 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 to that and see what, like how can we make this good for everybody? So Prime wasn't exactly accepted in HBCU culture. There was articles written about him. Is he good for this? Is he good for HBCUs and all that? And I was reading them then and I was just like, wow, it's weird that they aren't like cel cel celebrating him more. That there's a little bit of venom like that's it's weird but whatever so you have that hbcu culture community didn't exactly embrace prime and you had a coach who was saying that dion ain't swack he's swack you know he's he's third generation swack or whatever just like shut up <laughs> like who cares what swack is like if you're black and about black culture and you're there at that school you are swack you got a bunch of kids there who are first, first gener generation college, college kids. Are they swag? They just got there. That's the thing. That's how we 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 hurt each other and hurt the the, um, the process, right? So you have that. The last part is the business end of it. And I don't know what his con contract track is. I don't pocket watch like like that. But apparently he's getting like five or seven million. What 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 whatever he gets is well earned. But what people don't know is that his staff is so underpaid that they don't even match up to the worst Division One, I, I mean championship series schools numbers. So they aren't getting paid jack really. And that was always his concern. Now, Prime got $500,000, I think, in that range to coach this this year. Keep in mind, I said, right, a million dollars. He he gave a million dollars to help fin, 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 finish the locker room. Prime got money. This ain't about, oh, it's, it's a bag there. Now I'm going to chase it, chase it. No, it's that if we look at it, the business of it, right? If you've been watching him, and this is the thing about people talk, t t talking about it now, is that they, they, they haven't been watching enough to know enough about it. You would hear Prime talk about, last year they went to some, some bowl, some, uh, black, the black school bowl, I forget what it's called, but they got money off of it. So when they come back to the school, the check goes to the school, the football team don't get none of the money. The school got the money. Cool. He was talking about once he was saying how the city wasn't willing to partner with, with him to do some things to re really impact the co community. So you got this guy here who already without no form formal structure has meant $30 million to the si 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 city. And now you got people there who are like, you know, um, we're not going to work with him unless X, Y, and Z. And it's like, yo, he is the value. Figure out a way that this works for everybody. So you have that. So you got the coaches are underpaid. You got that. There's money being generated by, because of him, that his team don't benefit from. And then the business of football, of what is Dion has never claimed to be Mal 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 Malcolm X. He is aware of the culture and he supports black people. But I didn't expect him to stay there just, you know, sacrifice or whatever. Because it's that sacrifice isn't only him, it's his coaches. Like they're not getting no money. <laughs> like they're that if Dion's getting five, 
imagine what the assistants get. So this is bigger than just looking at Dion's leaving for a back. Dion doesn't need this money. Dion didn't need the coach. <laughs> Dion felt like he could help. And so his star power, he was like, you know what? I can do this here and make it work. I think when he got there, he looked around and the value that he was giving was one, not being appreciated, was two, being to take, to taken advantage of. And three, he got pride, you know, like <laughs> no one, no one really, you got to see it and you see him, but no one really gives him credit for what he has done there. You know, his announcers or whatever say, he had college game day at that school. <laughs> Y'all, if you're not in the sports, you won't know what that is, but it's a big deal. Like that Ohio State, Michigan is game day. Like he had Jacksonville, J J Jackson State playing whoever, some, some, some team. <laughs> see, I don't even know the teams. So I challenge anyone who's criti criticizing him to understand those four points and tell me what, what would you do? How do you how do you navigate that better? Like how would you stay stay there with those fa fa factors working working against you? Like how do you keep your staff intact when they're not ma making any money? You know, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's it's not just like oh Dion just left me. What are you talking about, yo? Do, do you know anything about sports business? Anything? So you're talking about on the field facilities community of HBCUs and then the business of it, the business of, of sports, like no one, people don't understand that. So I don't know the details of anything, but I know I was able to evaluate this when my son gave it, he gave me info on the sports end and us thinking about it on the, the, the business, the business end. I don't like him leaving, but, and I think that job is a, <laughs> it's a trash job, but I do think they hit, like with what he knows how to do, I think he'll make them win. Nothing is so basic as black people like to think on a whole. Not 